allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. shots I handed out last week. Uh, I put it in y'all's baskets, Paul and Clark. They're going to give them at the health department this year, and the times and everything is on there. We are just, as far as the stuff that's going on right now, we are under a tornado watch. I mean, it's just some peculiar weather we got going on right now. We are under a tornado watch today. Um, the have uh, been busy with the with the guys doing some things around the jail. I want to understand we've got some, possibly some windows going in um, maybe this week. And so I'm just waiting on a phone call for whenever we're ready on that deal. We'll start working those guys on that. We haven't got to mow because it's been so wet. So um, whenever we finally... Whenever the, whenever the ground dries out, we'll be able to get the guys back after it and do some other things. We are approaching the end of mow season, and whenever we get done with that, you're going to see us a lot more on road crew, picking up trash, things of that nature, um, getting out and doing that stuff. So um, as far as that goes, uh, also on a personal end, on I mentioned it to Paul yesterday. I called him, called Sandra, like, you know, tried to get a hold of you. I had tires on my truck. The, in, the interior belts start separating, so I had to order tires yesterday. I'm going to get them put on today, so I had to... Uh, which is strange, it, the amount of miles that I've got, but my belts were separating on the inside of the tr on the inside of the tire, which is you know done. I took it down to Dunn and they checked it out, but that happened yesterday on my truck. Um, other than that, um, we're just still hopping and popping. I've got a call in um, to Michael T uh, about uh, our deal because we should be getting some other stuff, some other funding from them from the feds. And so I'm just waiting on a return call we to get. Some of it today. Okay. I just, I just saw. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. So I've got. A, he should be calling me back uh, to get the rest of those fundings, find out what's going on with that. And uh, other than that, we're just rocking and rolling. So, and if I ever mention moving to any of y'all ever again, I want y'all to punch me in the face because <laughs> I never want to move again. <laughs> uh, I do have one more thing. Uh, on AT and T, they did send us a refund check for. $391.89. I did email them again. It was going to take two to three months before we get uh, another refund, and it could be up to $3,500, give or take a little bit in there. And that was on that eight, uh, that T1 that I had worked on for so long. And um, so anyway, we're getting some reimbursement. Good deal. On that. And I had talked to the gentleman last Wednesday. So. Did they ever come get their equipment? Yes, they did. Okay. Yes. And it got shipped back. There's not any more new business. We're going to move on to item number six, which will be approved permission to proceed from previous meeting. Do you have a Item number seven is going to be approved blanket POs. We have 
$1,000 for rock and natural stone. I have $1,000 to fleet core. $1,600 to performance foods. And $800 to fleet core. Those will be the blanket POs for this week. I'll say. Yes. Yes. Item number eight is going to be discussed and considered signing September monthly report from the Health Department, Election Board, Assessor, Treasurer, and County Clerk's Office. Motion on number eight. Yes. Okay, item number nine will be discussed in possible action to approve resolution for solicitation Sandborn Creek replacement. Yes, it is. It's over on uh, Lafayette Church, uh, Low Water Bridge. I make a motion on number nine. Ten, we discuss and consider signing a resolution to approve commercial license agreement with the Choctaw Mason Lake Mountain Fiscal Year 1819. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to pay $4,857.77 monthly. Uh, 
$4,857.77 monthly. A month for rent? Yes. It's by square footage. But I mean, it does include uh, all the utilities and custodial costs. And it, because I did check in on this, when they started doing this, you know, that's when the Health and Wellness Center is also partnering in it. And when they moved out, it's kind of a creative situation that we're going to be facing. But they're shopping a little more affordable. That's, that's what created the problem. I know Mike Butler was on that, and I talked to him about it, and that's, that's kind of what put us in that shape. Checking into that Allen Ball standing building. I don't know if it's being occupied now or not. I think it's empty. That's a good, be a nice size for them. Yeah. So if they relocate, what they do? Well, this only, that's on the mic. We've got so much money to build a building. And of course, it's been a while since I talked to Mike about it. But they were banking on the health and wellness to stay there. So the money that we were receiving, if they would have stayed, you know, would have been sufficient. We wouldn't be in this situation, but it didn't work out that way. But anyway, we get this money from the state. I think for one more year, is that right? Yeah, it's out. It's out. Yeah. But they're funding it for sale. They're funding for sale this year. That's the reason they're looking for it. But the state funded it for a good while. So it's not coming out of general? No. no. It's coming out of general? No, it's never come out of general. It's never come out of general. We just need a motion on this. I mean, I'll make that motion. I'll say it if it was safe. Item number 11 will be discussed consider yearly fee for occupational tax. And that's basically on alcohol. I didn't know we had tabled this a couple of weeks ago. So you know, I knew y'all wanted to think about it. This doesn't have to be done, but this has to be signed every year. I believe it comes to Karen's offices. So I didn't know if y'all had what y'all had your thoughts were on it. I didn't really get a chance to check it out, but do you know how many establishments we have outside the city? Not, not very many right now. Uh, we, we can do this at any time. Also. I don't think it's going to amount to much. I don't think we ought to do it after okay. and the way fine. the vote went. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, the way I think, look at the people's done spoke on it, is my opinion, when they voted, you know. Okay. Well, that's fine. Everybody say every time we get to sign Papers and yes, and then there's no charge, so it'd be zero on it for every year. And it comes in October, I think, 17th, August or September every year, I believe. So, okay, so we'll just table it and not, not do anything. No, no action. No action taken on item number 12. I mean, excuse me, I apologize, item number 11. Item number 12 will be discussed and take possible action on improving cameras for the courthouse. And Tim, 
I'm sure you have a little information on that. I do. Um, we got two quotes. First quote is going to be from Janie um, Systems or whatever, they want, whatever it's called. Janie Systems. And they sent five different invoices, okay? And it's for a total of Nine cameras with a six terabyte hard drive, and then you have camera number camera number ten, eleven, and twelve. Anyways, it's over seventeen thousand dollars. It's eight sixty nine, thirteen thirty one, seven forty seven, seven forty seven, and fourteen thousand seven twenty seven for basically thirteen cameras. And the system installed. We had a second, um, had a second bid done by um, Ross Bybee, um, who has got his own, got his own company that he has started. Um, it's called Two B Two B Productions and Services, and his system. And the system that the best one it's a 12 it's an NVR with 12 terabyte storage which could be expandable to 24 terabytes um, seven inter seven exterior cameras eight interior cameras one will have a, a the camera in the courtroom will actually have a microphone to be able to listen to what's going on in the courtroom proceedings that comes with a monitor and everything, and his is $5,500. That's installation, and it's the same equipment that, it's the same exact equipment that J&E has. Let me ask you this, though, Tim, when you set the cameras up, are they gonna be cables running to them? He said there'll only be, there'll be a, a couple of spots. Cause you know how our, about our building, you he, know, it's, he, it's hard to hide. He came, he came in and went through the whole building um, he said there will be a couple of spots where they can't put the can't, they can't put the cable in, but what they do is put decorative trim up where it hides that cable. Um, and he said that's all included in. He said um, it will be IP over address, which means that anywhere that I am, I'll be able to view the cameras in the courthouse. It will record and hold data for approximately two weeks. We have a two-week loop, so every two weeks. Um, it, will, it, will, it will loop over. The system will have 24 ports in it, which means that we're only going to have 15 cameras right now, but we can add up to another nine cameras to the system if we wanted to. Um, the outside cameras will be all weather cameras. The inside cameras will be, you know, a low profile, not the big big cameras. Um, we will have to find one secure place in the courthouse to put the actual monitor and different things, but most of it I'll, we'll do at my office. It'll be password protected, um, and I'll be the only one with the password to it, and then I'll have the password locked in my safe if something ever happened. Somebody can get in there and get it out. But that's to protect the integrity and the, and the security of that system. But there would be no area um, I mean, and we've got two other bids from him. You know, one one of the bids for fifty three twenty five. The the difference there is you go from a eight year from a twelve terabit, twelve terabyte to eight terabyte. He said that would last you about a week and a half. But my thought process was one hundred seventy five dollars for a, a bigger unit that's expandable out to twenty four would be better. And then he gave us another another one that was for forty. 48.75, but that only that only provided 12 cameras, and that we had several spots outside that was not protected by cameras. The front wouldn't have a camera on it, um, and the east side wouldn't have a camera. Just the areas with doors. So I told him I'd, I'd rather have the whole facility with cameras. That way we can see Karen's office. That way we can see everything from see down to her door, see everything that we need to see. To make sure the courthouse is safe. Well, they're gonna put a camera in each office. And there will be no cameras inside the offices. 
there'll be cameras going to the doors of those offices. Um, so you can shoot, see who's going in and who's going out. See who's going in who's going out. This is the first stage of what I'd like to say is a three-stage project that we'd like to do. The first stage is cameras. The second stage would be, and, and, and actually we're kind of doing this backwards, we'd like to have ID cards already in place, but we have not got our system up and running. It's more complicated, but we've got it. Yeah. It's just going to take a little bit of time. So three-stage system. First one is ID cards. Second one is cameras. Third one is putting we would like to make our door secure where there's not access all the way around. And our plan would be is this back door, you gotta have this door open because of the ramp. And you gotta have the front door open because that's the front door of the courthouse, which is fine. But the back door is open now. It's a, I mean, that's really no reason it should be, but we can put a key card reader on it where the, the ladies that come from different offices can key card their way in. In that process, we'd actually want to key card all of our doors. That way, if somebody, if an employee comes in after hours, we have a record on a computer system of who's coming in, who's leaving the courthouse, and what we have. So that's the three phase. This phase right here for the cameras is 5,500, and I would put in 4,000 out of the courthouse security fund um, if the county is willing to come up with the extra 1,500 with the cameras in the courthouse. Well, you think, uh, I don't think it's all right. Kind of warranty. Yeah, it's a good idea. Two-year warranty. Can you get insurance on for maintenance of lightning? I think that would be covered under our county policy. I've got to go down to the insurance office here in a little bit, and I will ask them about that. And, and this system is fully upgradable as we progress. That was one of the things I, I was sure to specify when I walked him around. I was like, this has to be fully upgradable. We don't want to be stuck with a system that is obsolete the minute it goes in. We want to be able to, it's upgradable. And he said, absolutely, this will be an upgradable system. You know, we got a, a fire hazard area in this courthouse in the maintenance utility room. That probably should have a camera down there all the time. Yeah, we did not add that in, um, but we can. What we do have is any entrance that would go down there, such as the elevator or the stairwell that goes down, we'll have a camera so we'll know who goes down there if somebody goes down there. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't consider an intrusion. I was talking about the mechanical aspects of the fire. Gotcha. That's where it's going to be. We can, we can work on moving something around maybe to make that work, but... What would it cost me to add more? That I don't know. It's not broke down by... Um, well, I can tell you that probably a couple hundred dollars to add a camera would be would be the expense. So Please. you're saying we're getting 15? We're getting 15 cameras, yes. Okay. And anyway, so well, that security is going to pay 4000 and we need to come up 1500 mm -hmm. So if we wanted to add any more to it, then it could be a little bit more if we put them in the basement. So. And, I call, and I'll call Ross today and ask him what that would be, but I think we need to, I think this is a big, a big improvement to our courthouse. Yes. It's, a, it's an improvement to our, our citizens. We're not able to put a deputy in the courthouse um, like we should, like we need one here, but this is one more little thing that we can do to provide safety to our employees that work here. It's the same we've probably been lucky so far. So it's the same equipment that JE uses. He works for JE um, and has started his own company. So he's not been in business very long. Uh, he's been with JE for almost 20 years. Um, great guy. What's his name? Ross Bobby. His um, his wife actually is a secretary for the DA's office, and that's one of the reasons why. Basically, there's no labor fee included in this. It's he's helping helping the county. Um, Yes. All storage is. I appreciate it. So you're going to call and 
I will get it taken care of. I've been in contact with him as of yesterday. He sent me a message, so I'll get back with him today. Okay, I guess we'll move on to item number 13. Commissioner, while you guys are doing that, I'd like to, if you don't mind, I was out doing a sheriff, three sheriff sales. Um, we've um, had another big week. Um, had some more cattle stolen south of Two Highway. Um, and then last night we had a five by 10 flatbed trailer stolen and was able to, just so happen we were all out, there were several of us out the party side uh, for the week. And uh, we had several, uh, me and two other guys were actually out and wind up recovering our stolen trailer. It got stolen. The guy called, says, had been gone about 20 minutes. Left, came back, and he was gone. Loaded down with all their furniture. And um, we came in from, it was there at Little Sand Boys. We were down at McCurtain, so we came in from Fairfield Farms, and Terry Garland came over from Minor Cemetery. Wind up boxed on me, and they were still. They were driving on a blowed out tire. Didn't even have the common courtesy to take the jack and wheel the jack up. And they were driving down the county road. You can see from where they stole it all the way down. That jack just dragging down that dirt road. <laughs> just about a quarter inch all the way through that road. Left your trail. You got a little, you got a little bit of road. Need a little, need a little gravel down here. <laughs> but we, we um, wind up recovering some more stolen property. Um, been very fortunate. I think we've got a good lead on the on stolen cattle. Um, but it's a little ways from where Stanley Wright's, it was Brian Ford's cattle that stolen. A little ways from where Stanley Wright's cattle was stolen. So we might we might be onto something in that little area. But we're going to try, we're actually in the, with the Oklahoma Department of Ag and Texas Southwest to have a, have a deal here where we feed all of our farmers and ranchers and try to get them all in and before they leave have GPS locations and their brands because a lot of our we're learning that a lot of our folks don't have their brands registered nor do they even have them branded and there's been a lot of land change hands in different places so we don't have a current catalog of, of who has cattle where so we want to try to get that put together um, put together a book for Haskell County that has everybody's brand and where their cattle are so we can have a better record keeping of it. Brands have been registered. They're not registered unless you're a member of the Oklahoma Cattle Association, Texas Southwest, and then you register it through them. But there's a lot of brands that aren't, that aren't registered. Now, in because Oklahoma's not a branding state, there's some states like Colorado, that is a brand state that before you ship cattle, they have to have a brand on them. And they have what they call a branding inspector that comes out. So I've talked to a couple different ranchers and I said, hey, why don't we have, why don't we have that in Oklahoma? And it's because we move so much cattle in Oklahoma and get so much cattle from out, outside of other states that if you were to move a load of cattle from pasture A to pasture B, that branding inspector has to come down and make sure those cattle you're moving has a brand on it. And Oklahoma can't financially support support that because of the amount of cattle feeds. Well, another thing, Cameron, trying to get that chip thing down. But they've got they've got to vote it down again. I I'm not a big fan. I'm not I'm not a big proponent of Well it comes up, it's been coming up know. in legislation and it hadn't been passed yet, but I, one day it probably will get passed. I agree. But you know, you had it. And my thought is, and I understand it. You lose cattle. That's that's a big expense. But you you put expense back on that rancher for that chip. And then the other thing is, somebody always knows where you. Somebody always knows where that trailer with those cows are. You know what I mean? Somebody always knows where you're. So I mean, I think that I think that should be up to the rancher if he wants to put a chip in his cow or not. But sooner or later, I've heard it would be. Fast. Found a bunch of back tags the other day as well in a creek. No reason that somebody pulled a bunch of back tags off and throw them in a the creek. We found a bunch of back tags pulled off and thrown in the creek. 
something that happened this weekend I forgot to mention. I don't want you guys to remember our uh, firefighters, all the first responders right now, that we had a loss of life on Saturday. Um, they responded to a house fire, structure fire with entrapment. Now over at Brooklyn, we had Sheriff's Department and I believe five fire departments show up out of Brooklyn that there was a loss of life. And one of the family, it was a family member of one of our fire chiefs um, that passed away. And uh, I asked you, do you remember those guys? Because it's it's always tough losing losing people. So I ask that you guys remember. It was, it was a busy time for the fire departments this weekend. McCurtain had two structure fires as well and a life flight. It was a very busy weekend for our firefighters as well. Since July, we've taken over 900 calls. That's the calls that we've responded to since July. That averages almost 10 calls a day. That's not counting paper service, everything else that you have to do in a day's time. And that's, you know, that's up from about six at this time last year. It's just things are getting, things are getting worse across the state, not just like the central. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen so many cattle getting stolen. It's across the state, I'll tell you this, I've talked to, one time. I've talked to Jerry Flowers last night at 11 o'clock the lady who was part of the trailer getting stolen was also part of the cattle thieving that, that we had. And uh, so I called him about it. And um, we're, knock on wood, very fortunate. We've solved right now about 70% of our cattle thefts. And they're not getting good good results elsewhere. Um, and we're having just as many stolen. I mean, they're still them all across the state. It's just not, just not central. And it, it's... That LMA, that Livestock Market Association, is sending, he said they're sending bulletins out every day to, to sell barns because there's cattle being stolen everywhere right now. Well, what happens, like uh, they caught those people and sold the cattle and they didn't have the money or the cattle to give back to the owner? You're just, just out, you gotta get restitution from the people. You get restitution. And, that, and I'm learning that happens a bunch. And, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of these calves that are still will go to feed lot somewhere. Yeah. Well, unless you catch it before they get off that trailer, you don't know which calf belongs to you. Well, that feed lot and that new feed lots are out of state, Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, different places. So you're not going to be able to. You don't get your cow back. You're just out the. Or. They're going to butcher. They're going to pack the plants, and you don't you don't find them till they're till they're already on somebody's shelf.
make a motion on number 13. I'll second. Yes, number 14 is to adjourn and I'll make that motion.